So if you remember, we did talk about lists. L is equal to let's say one comma seven comma four comma two comma hundred, and close the big bracket, and this becomes a list. When I print this, it shows the values in this list, right? So from now onwards, we'll be using the IPython shell. This is called the interactive Python shell on the right, as you know, and as I expect, I, I believe you are familiar with this uh, interactive Python shell on the right. On the left will be the code that we'll be writing. Many a times we, we may want to execute a few commands by typing them here, right? So just now I said L equals so and so, it created a list. And then I said print L, it did print the entire list, right? I can, if I want to add some value to it, by add I mean include a value to this i can say l append 1024 and what will happen let's see you get 1024 here right a few more points to note when i say l append once again 2 it does include 2 twice you see we all have learned in our schools that if you take a set elements are not repeated but this is not a set you may want to note this you know in a set you put a flower bracket you see in mathematics you would write a flower bracket in your notebook and you are not supposed to repeat the elements there that's a convention it's understood but here you can repeat as much as you want all right there is a small thing that i want you all to note which is there are some inbuilt functions in l Okay, just the way we said L append, we can also say L remove one and it is only easy to guess what will L be now. L will have everything that it had initially with the number one removed. As you can see one is removed, it starts from seven, right? So now what is your guess? What if I remove, let's say hundred. It removes 100 right there's no questions there right it's very obvious but what if I say remove 2 the number 2 is repeated twice here so possibility 1 is it will remove the first occurrence of 2 or maybe the second occurrence of 2 or maybe it will remove both right so let's see what it does let's print L and you see it has removed the first occurrence of 2 just in case I typed it once again, it removes the other occurrence of 2. I hope this is clear. This much of lists you need to know. Alright, let's get started with some more ideas with lists. Let me clear the shell. What I am now going to tell you is probably one of the most important ideas in data sciences. And what is that? That's a matrix. And how do you represent matrices? There are actually very sophisticated ways in which you can represent a matrix in uh, Python. In fact, there's a library function called the numpy numerical Python. We'll not get in there. I'll now tell you a very naive way of representing a matrix. So as you can see, I created a list L and I appended one to it. I appended 2 to it, I appended 3 to it. Okay, so sometimes I may not want to type the entire command, a simple up arrow will repeat the previous command. Okay, another up arrow will repeat the previous to previous command and so on. Right? Okay, so now when I print L, it shows me 1, 2, and 3. Exactly what I have appended here, as you can see. Alright, so as I have been telling you people, a computer is indeed a very dumb machine. It cannot do anything that you don't tell it to uh, do. Okay, fine. So now, what is your guess? What if I create another array x and then I append l to x? You see that's strange. Let me try doing that. Oh well, it accepted. There was no error. What does it even mean? I am appending, I am creating an array x and I am appending another array l to x. 
how does it look like let me print x and see it you see it is an array and it contains another array let me create um, just for example let's say m equals 10 20 30 and let me take x just the way i appended l into x let me append m into x now when i say print x it prints 1 2 3 10 20 30 so it is a list within a list there's a very popular idiom in english called wheels within wheels <laughs> you know so it is uh, idea within an idea you would have heard this right so a problem within a problem right so you see uh, this is a list within a list okay so as you all know there are many living um, uh, sort of many microorganisms inside our body right so a living organism within a living or a living organism right <laughs> something like that right so anyway you'll get used to it in fact uh, there's no limit here you can have a list of 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 a list <laughs> okay you can go up to infinity like that so uh, uh, just to complicate to make your life tough and <laughs> well why 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 should we not teach you complicated stuff why should it always be easy let me complicate it by typing another list let's say t i'll call it a list and i'll append x to it and i'll print t you see what's happening now here is a list containing a list containing two lists and i'll append another thing to t which is 100 101 102 another list if i print t yeah, something else is coming right a list first you see this is a list 10 20 30 you probably are wondering why is he wasting time so this is important don't worry which time you'll realize what i'm doing in fact it will come naturally to you uh, the idea of list of lists okay so and then this is another list one two three another list 10 20 30 and these two things put together is another list as you can see right this much these two things put together is this list let me start carefully and then say ah this list this is an element of the bigger list and the bigger list has the second element as this so it will be clear when i say t of zero what do you expect t of zero to be if i were to print t in fact you can simply say t of zero also it will print but i'll not um, do that so print t of zero will give you the first element of the list t all right t of 1 will give me the second element of the list t so let's now create a matrix 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so how do i do that a matrix m let me say capital m is equal to so much and i'll append first let's say 1 comma 2 comma 3 to it I'm, I'm sorry i'm sorry you may not be able to see this okay so you, you have m append 1 2 3 and then i say m append 4 5 6 right and then i'll say m append 7 8 and 9 m append 7 8 9 so i think it's clear so let me press many return keys so that it comes to the center and you can see it m append 1 2 3 m append 4 5 6 m append 7 8 9 I'll frequently keep clearing the kernel so that it refreshes in fact i can also use the clear screen but i prefer doing it like this okay so oh i would have lost all the content that i had typed so i'll type it once again m is a list i'll append one two three to it i will again append four five six to it it'll be nice if you can uh, type these commands alongside with me 7 8 and 9 right and then i'll print m capital m and i get 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and this is how i'm going to treat a matrix by treating a matrix i mean this is how i'm going to store a matrix using lists so you know m of 0 will be so much and m of 0 is a list containing 1 2 3 and in that list i can see the 
first element which is 1 in that list i can see the second element which is m of 0 comma 1 you see in matrices we would write a um, subscript ij a i j a 1 1 a 1 2 a 1 3 etc so similarly here we say m of 0 2 is equal to so much so on and so forth so what all did we learn just now so let just 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 to end this i'll also show you what is in the diagonal what will be in the diagonal m of 0 0 will be 1 so please note you can say print or simply write the variable it will still display okay what is m of 1 1 this is called the diagonal elements in the matrix 1 and 5 m of 2 2 is 9 I am not going in detail here because I assume you have undergone the computational thinking course and you are used to this one dimensional and two dimensional thinking okay so we are we now uh, while a list is one dimensional what I am doing is by making a list within a list I am creating what is called two dimensional data right so the, the, the word two dimensional data individually makes sense but put together what does it mean you you will you will get to know of it in, in some time all right so that's about lists you understand something about lists right now the best way to understand lists is to go ahead and write a piece of code about it from now onwards we'll be discussing almost in every single code we'll be using list at least i have used it in in, in the code that i have done in the recent past so I believe even you'll be using it. So at least in this week's discussion, we'll be using good amount of lists. So it's good to get used to what are lists. So go ahead, open your terminal, start typing your own programs, play around with lists.